Good morning. morning. Welcome you to Tree of Life on this seventh Sunday of the Pentecost season. We continue our Biblical Lutheran Doctrine series today looking at the gift of faith that we have received from God, one of the most important gifts we will ever be given. We welcome also those of you who are joining us on the internet this morning. We pray that God will bless us as we gather around his word this morning. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. We have come into the presence of God who created us to love and serve him as his dear children, but we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. Amen. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. God of all power and might, you are the giver of all that is good. Remove the stress from our lives. Strengthen us in true faith. Provide us with all we need and keep us safe in your care. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our first scripture lesson is recorded in Genesis chapter 15, verses 1 through 6. With our topic of faith today, we turn to Father Abraham, who for many years didn't think he was going to be a father, even though God had promised him that he would have a son and he would be the father of many nations. In our reading for today, God reassures him that he will keep his promise. After this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your very great reward. But Abram said, O sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless, and the one who will inherit my estate is Eliezer of Damascus? But Abram said, You have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. And the word of the Lord came to him, This man will not be your heir, but a son coming from your own body will be your heir. He took him outside and said, Look up at the heavens and count the stars, if indeed you can count them. Then he said to him, So shall your offspring be. Abram believed the Lord, and he credited it, his faith, to him as righteousness. This is the word of our Lord. Join together today in reading the verses of our Psalm of the Day, Psalm 71. In you, O Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Rescue me and deliver me in your righteousness. Turn your ear to me and save me. Be my rock of refuge to which I can always go. For you are my rock and my fortress. Since my youth, O God, you have taught me. And to this day I declare your marvelous deeds. Even when I am old and gray, do not forsake me, till I declare your power to the next generation, your might to all who are to come. Our second lesson was recorded in Paul's epistle to the Ephesians in chapter 2, verses 1 through 9. In these verses, Paul points out to us just how important this gift of faith is to each one of us. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our sinful nature and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature objects of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms, in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. This is the word of God. Join together in reading our verse of the day. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Happy are they who hear the word, hold it fast in an honest and good heart, and bring forth fruit with patience. Hallelujah. Please stand for the reading of our gospel. Holy Gospel for this morning is recorded in Luke chapter 8, verses 40 through 48. It gives us an example of the power of faith. Now when Jesus returned, a crowd welcomed him, for they were all expecting him. Then a man named Jairus, a ruler of the synagogue, came and fell at Jesus' feet, pleading with him to come to his house 
because his only daughter, a girl of about 12, was dying. As Jesus was on his way, the crowds almost crushed him. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years, but no one could heal her. She came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak, and immediately her bleeding stopped. Who touched me, Jesus asked. When they all denied it, Peter said, Master, the people are crowding and pressing against you. But Jesus said, Someone touched me. I know that power has gone out from me. Then the woman, seeing that she could not go unnoticed, came trembling and fell at his feet. In the presence of all the people, she told why she had touched him and how she had been instantly healed. Then he said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. This is the word of our Lord. For our confession today, we use the third article of the Apostles' Creed and its explanation, which details for us the work of the Holy Spirit. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. What does this mean? I believe that I cannot, by my own thinking or choosing, believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. In the same way, he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church, he daily and fully forgives all sins to me and all believers. On the last day, he will raise me and all the dead and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. This is most certainly true. You may be seated. I invite our children to come forward for a children's message. sit with the others here. We'll have a little, little lesson for you today. Do you guys like getting presents? Yeah. Birthday presents. Uh, I want Christmas, birthday presents. Christmas presents. You like presents? Yeah, I like presents, guys. What kind of presents do you like to get? Uh, I like to get Hot Wheels. Hot Wheels? I had Hot Wheels when I was your age. It's okay. Old people like Hot Wheels too. <laughs> <laughs> What else do we like to get for presents? What, what's some presents you've got? What's your favorite presents? Uh, what? Toys? Yeah, toys. Oh, I like toys. You bet. I just want toys, guys. <laughs> How about presents you can't see? Uh, you want to get a present you can't see? What if I said there's presents right here for you? Um, it's a joke. <laughs> Might be a joke. Uh, just white joke. Not kind of as exciting as a present you can see, is it? If I had a nice wrapped box with Hot Wheels in it or toys in it, that'd be more exciting. And cars on it. Uh huh. Cars on it too. You know, God gave us a present that we can't see. He put it in your heart. He made you believe that Jesus died for you. And because you believe that Jesus died for you, what do you get to do one day? Go to heaven. You get to go to heaven. And if you didn't have that present that you can't see, you couldn't go to heaven. So even though you can't see it, it's a wonderful present. Because we get to one day go and it's live with God. It's a wonderful God. present. Everything in heaven is a fun present. It's all happiness and joy. Yeah, it's a present for lunch. Yeah. So now... Think about that. The next time you get a present you can see, think about the present God gave you that you maybe can't see, but that you're going to get to enjoy forever in heaven. We should thank God for that present, shouldn't we? Let's fold our hands and say a prayer. Dear Lord God, we thank you for giving us our ticket to heaven, our faith in Jesus. Keep that faith in our hearts our whole life so that we can live with you in heaven. In Jesus we pray. 
Amen. Our children are invited to go to our children's church lesson. Miss Michelle is going to be teaching them. We will continue with our hymn of the day and the rest of our service. You can go back with them if you'd like. Go by your mom and dad. Okay. Okay? Thanks for coming up. to you as gifts from God so that you may live in peace now and forever. Amen. Word of God for us to consider is a part of our second lesson, the letter that Paul wrote to the Ephesians, reading chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith, and this not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. This is the word of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior from sin, dear receivers of a wonderful gift from God. Gift giving has long been a part of human interaction. People young and old like to get gifts. We look forward to those special events or special days or holidays when it's likely that someone's going to give us a gift. Children who sometimes aren't early risers don't seem to have a problem popping out of bed on Christmas morning because they know there are gifts waiting for them under the tree. And even adults, when they see a gift under the Christmas tree or on their birthday with their name on it, get a little twinkle in their eye, a happy feeling in their heart. Psychologists tell us that gift giving is an important part of human interaction. They explain that the receivers of the gifts feel important. They feel loved, they feel special, they feel that somebody cares about them, and that helps to build their self-esteem and their relationship with the person who gives them the gift. But they also point out that the givers of gifts really need that in their lives. You see, if somebody allows you to give them a gift, it validates you in their relationship with you. It makes you feel that you are important to them. And so there is that back and forth between the givers and the receivers of gifts that psychologists say helps to improve human interaction and relationships. 
When we think about gift giving, there is somebody who, of course, is at the top of our list. It is our Heavenly Father, who, according to James, the brother of Jesus, gives us every good and perfect gift. He says it comes down from the Father of heavenly lights. When we think about all of the gifts that scripture shows to us coming from God, our hearts are filled with thankfulness, thankfulness that God has validated the relationship that he has with us, thankful for the benefits that those gifts provide to us, gifts that we enjoy here during our life on earth, but also the gifts that point us to an eternal life in heaven. We could spend an entire day talking about the gifts we receive from God, and sometimes we do that throughout our Thanksgiving service. We give thanks for the gifts we receive. But today, we want to focus on that one special, invisible gift from God. The gift that he has placed into our hearts that assures us of an eternal life in heaven, the gift of faith. And as we think about that gift of faith and how important it is to us, we, we want to acknowledge it. We want to show God that we're thankful for it. We, we kind of feel the need to, to repay him somehow for what he's done for us, but there's never any way we could do that. And so we're told to just say thank you. Just say thank you for the grace that motivated God to give us this gift. And just say thank you for the faith that assures us of eternal life. In our world today, people give gifts for a number of different reasons. One of the reasons is because the, the receivers of the gifts need them. Parents often give gifts to their children because it's something they need that they can't get themselves. When I was younger, there were matinee movies on Saturday down at the local theater, but they cost a quarter to get into, a whole quarter. But we didn't have a whole quarter as children. We didn't have any jobs, so mom and dad would give us 25 cents so we could go see the movie. As you get older, parents perhaps pay for your tuition so you can go through college and postgraduate work. Maybe they sign or co-sign a loan so you can buy a car or perhaps even a home. Without them giving you that assistance, it might be impossible for you to get those things. So it is we think about what we needed most in life it wasn't a car, it wasn't an education. We had this huge debt that we had to pay off, a debt that resulted from the sins that we have committed against God. God gave us his commandments. He told us what he expects of us. And he said, follow these commandments perfectly, to the letter, crossing every T and dotting every I. Well, a brief glimpse into the law will show us just how miserable, how miserably we have failed. I think Paul perhaps wrote one of the greatest understatements written in Scripture when in Romans 3.23 he said, All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. If you didn't know the rest of Scripture and the rest of the law and the rest of the, the mirror that the law is used so you can look into, you might think that, well, we were close. And maybe in our lives we're told that you're good people, you're good parents, you're good spouses, you're good children, you're close. You just need a little boost to get over the, over the hill. But then we go to Paul's letter to the Ephesians and he shows us the severity of the debt that we owe to God and the condition that it has brought on us. The first verse of our second reading, chapter 2, verse 1 of Ephesians says, As for you... You were dead in your transgressions and sins. Now you and I know that there is no more hopeless condition than dead. If you are dead, there is absolutely nothing you can do to try to improve your condition. You can't at that point decide to change your lifestyle, to exercise better and eat a better diet. You can't decide to pull out your cell phone and dial 911 and ask someone to come help you. You can't jump in your car and run to urgent care and see if there's anyone there that can improve your condition. Dead is dead. It means you are completely helpless. 
And that's the word that Paul used to describe our spiritual condition because of sin. He didn't say you're stuck in the mud, you need a little help. He said you're dead. You are dead in your transgressions and sins. Dead people can't help themselves physically or spiritually. And so there was nothing that we could do to change that condition. And not only that, but dead in sin makes us ugly. It makes us enemies of God. It makes us hostile toward him and his attempts to help us. It causes ugly things to happen in our life. Greed, envy, spitefulness, jealousy, hatred, stealing, defaming one another, murder, all of those things because of sin. And that's who we had become. If you were to look at somebody that had those kind of characteristics, I think you'd want to stay as far away from them as you possibly can. And it would have been God's right to send us as far away from him as he possibly could into the deepest depths of hell for the sins that we had committed and the people that we had become. But verses 4 and 5 of Ephesians chapter 2 speak differently. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. God looked at unlovable people and loved them. I know that's a contradiction of terms. You can't love something that's unlovable, but God did. And God did it for one reason, because of his grace. Grace is a word I think we're familiar with. Some of our churches use that as their church name, grace. It reminds us of undeserved love. And not only love that is given to people who, who don't deserve it, but love that is given to people who really deserve the opposite. The wages of sin is death. The soul that sins is the one that will die. If we sin, we're supposed to get punishment. We're supposed to die. We're supposed to be in hell forever. But instead of giving us that, God gave us his love. And he did that in Christ Jesus. It cost him not to punish us who deserved punishment. It cost him his one and only son. And not just for 33 years away from home in heaven, living on the earth, away from God in heaven, but eternally separated from him while hanging on the cross, crying out, why have you forsaken me? God did that to his son because he loved us that much. We who deserved punishment, we who deserved the wrath and anger of God, we who deserved to be in hell forever because of our sins, instead received grace, love from God. And that love from God came to us through the working of the Holy Spirit. It is by grace you have been saved. You have been rescued from that spiritual death that had claimed you. You have been rescued from the sins that imprisoned you. You have been rescued from the enemy, the devil, who claimed you as his child. And you have been saved by grace through faith. Paul wrote, it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves, it's a gift from God, not of works so that no one can boast. Just a few minutes earlier, you joined with me in confessing, I believe that I cannot, by my own thinking or choosing, believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him. Dead people can't think and choose. Dead people can't make decisions. Dead people can't take actions that will benefit and help them. And so we confess, I couldn't do it by myself. I needed someone to come to me. And Paul says, but the Holy Spirit has brought us God's grace through faith. And Martin Luther in his explanation says, the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel. And remember when this happened, this didn't happen when God looked down and saw how close we were. We had kept most of his commandments. We were almost over the top. We were just about there. While we were still sinners, God sent Jesus to die for us. 
while we were still his enemies, hostile toward him, running away from him, cursing him, denying him, not wanting to have anything to do with him, God sent his Holy Spirit through the word, through the waters of baptism, to show us his grace and to give us that gift of faith. And he says, now you have been saved. Yes, through sin we were ignorantly enemies of God. We were ignorantly running away from him. We were ignorantly spiteful against him. We thought we were on the right path because the devil who controlled us convinced us we were. But with God's grace in our life, we see things completely differently. And maybe as I, I describe us as we're controlled by sin, you, you kind of think, I, I've never been that way. I've never hated Jesus. I never rebelled against him. But we were all born sinful. And it may have been the waters of baptism that quickly in our life washed away that sin and, and erased that kind of feeling toward God. And it might not have even been a, a conscious hatred of God. So many people in today's world have that hatred of God and don't know it. They're told they're on the right path. They're told they're doing the right thing. And when they look at their earthly lives, everything seems to be going well. They don't think they need anything from God. And then they stand before him on judgment day and he says, are you perfect? And they have to say no. But you and I on judgment day can stand before God and when he says, are you perfect? We say, in Christ Jesus I am. He erased all of my sins. He paid for them all on Calvary's cross. They're gone. They're not mine anymore. I'm not responsible for the guilt anymore. I am perfect because of Jesus. And that was a gift that was given to you. A gift you don't see. You know, where's your proof that when Jesus died on the cross, your sins were removed? If we get a gift, sometimes we want the receipt. When we buy something, we want the receipt. When Jesus died for us, the receipt was given in our hearts. You tell me what it would take for someone to convince you that Jesus isn't your Savior. You know, if they threaten you with physical violence, you might say, Jesus isn't my Savior because of your weakness and your desire not to be hurt. Maybe someone offers you enough money and that temptation leads you to say, okay, yeah, I don't believe in Jesus, but it, does it change what's really in your heart? What would it take to change what's in your heart? That you know Jesus died for you. That's your guarantee. That's the gift you've been given. That's the power of the gift that you've been given. Faith is being sure of what you hope for and confident of what you didn't see. Have you ever seen heaven? Have you ever talked with somebody who's been there? Putting a lot of uh, trust in God, aren't we? That there really is a heaven. And that Jesus died for us so we can go there. But you see, that's the power of the gift. I'm not worried about the trust I'm putting in that promise. I know it's certain. We have a hope that we cling to, a sure and certain hope. We know that when this life is over, we will be in heaven because we've received the gift of faith. And that's a gift that God gave us simply because of his grace. And he said, it's not something I'm going to ask you to repay. It's not something that you have to now work like you're some kind of indentured servant to pay off the debt. It's free and clear and it's all yours completely, totally. It's not by works so don't brag about who you are. Boast about the gift God gave you. Tell people about your Savior, Jesus, and what he means to you. Just say thank you to God by spending some quiet time in prayer. Just saying thank you. Just say thank you to God by living willfully according to his commandments, even when the world around you is telling you you don't have to obey all of them the way he gave them to you. Just say thank you to God by the little acts of kindness you show and do for one another. Just say thank you in the words that you say and in the actions that you take that let people see that Jesus is in your heart. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. 
And this is not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. The best gift that you could ever be given. A gift that moth and rust and thieves cannot destroy or take away. A gift that is yours today, sure and certain, guaranteed by the Holy Spirit working in your heart to give you that confidence. Live in the joy of being the receiver of that gift, knowing your giver, God the Heavenly Father. By grace, you have been saved through faith. Thank you, Lord, for this gift. Amen. And the peace of God that goes beyond our understanding will guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Our offerings for the Lord will now be gathered. Please stand for prayer. And in our prayers this morning, we also offer a prayer on behalf of Roman, who is going to be having eye surgery on Wednesday to repair a detached retina. We pray. We will praise you, our God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. You are faithful in all your words and gracious in all your deeds. You uphold all who are falling and raise up all who are dead in sin. All eyes look to you for food in due season. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. Well, Heavenly Father, we praise you especially for your Son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent as your messenger of peace. We thank you that he fulfilled the words of the prophet by riding into the city of Jerusalem to be our Savior. For the assurance that Jesus fulfilled the prophetic utterances regarding him, we give you thanks. We thank you also for the Holy Spirit, who through that powerful gospel message has given us the gift of faith. Our confidence in Jesus and his work to save us from our sin brings us great joy and comfort in this life and it assures us of an eternal life in heaven. We thank and praise you for this gift and we live our lives to say thank you in all that we do. Heavenly Father, we thank you for taking care of our greatest need, our need for forgiveness. We also thank you for the promises you have made to be with us wherever we go to the very end of the age. With that in mind, we know that you will be with Roman on Wednesday. You will be with the staff of nurses and doctors and attendants who will be working with him to repair his detached retina. If it is your will, allow them to be completely successful let his recovery be, be uh, comfortable and let him return once again to the life that you've given him as a child here on earth looking forward to his home in heaven. 
Bless him in his surgery and his recovery that he may be a blessing to you. We ask this in Jesus' name. And in Jesus' name we also join to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We continue now to prepare our hearts for the Lord's Supper. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is good and right so to do. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who has called us to be his own so that we may live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Christ on the night he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me then he took the cup he gave thanks and gave it to his disciples saying drink from it all of you this is my blood of the new covenant shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me and the peace of the Lord be with you always Amen. O Christ, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. O Christ, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy. be seated. You're now invited to come forward for the sacrament of the altar.
take and eat. This is the true body of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which he gave into death for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and eat. This is the true body of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which he gave into death for your sins. Also, take and eat. Take and eat. This is the true body of your Savior, given into death for your sins. For the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed on the cross for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And now may this true body and blood of our Savior strengthen you and keep you in true faith unto life everlasting. Your sins are forgiven. You can depart in peace. Amen. Savior strengthen you and keep you in true faith unto life everlasting. Your sins are forgiven. You can depart in peace. Amen. He gave into death for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take drink. This is the true blood of your Savior shed for your sins. Take drink. This is the true blood of your Savior shed for your sins. May this true body and blood of our Savior strengthen you and keep you in true faith unto life everlasting. Your sins are forgiven. You can depart in peace. Amen. Please stand and we'll join in singing, Thank the Lord.
prayer of your people, O Lord, that the lips which have praised you here may glorify you in the world, that the eyes which have seen the coming of your Son may long for his coming again, and that all who have received in his true body and blood the pledge of your forgiveness may be restored to live a new and holy life through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace, live in harmony with one another, and serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen, amen, amen. May be seated as we close with the final hymn. Reminders from our bulletin, uh, the ladies' wow meeting is going to meet tomorrow night at 7 o'clock here at the church. All ladies of the congregation are invited to come to the meeting. Next Sunday is the fifth Sunday of the month, and as is our tradition, we have a potluck planned. It's going to be your summertime favorites. So put together a dish that you enjoy during the summer and share it with us following our Sunday school and Bible class next Sunday. And then uh, a week from tomorrow, we hope to begin our Vacation Bible School for the year. Our registrations are down quite a bit this year, though, so if you know of anyone, neighbors, friends, relatives that have children 4 through 12, um, please contact us as soon as possible. Um, we hope by Wednesday to know if we'll have enough to uh, hold the VBS this year, or we may have to postpone it until next summer. So if you know of anybody, Please have them contact me through my cell phone number or email or the church's email. Uh, get in touch with us and we'll register them. Are there any other announcements anyone would like to make? Seeing none, we do have some refreshments for you. Hope that you can stay and enjoy those. And then we'll have our Sunday school and our adult Bible class at 11 o'clock. God's blessings to you. Hope to see you all again next Sunday. <laughs>